All right, guys, we've got one of those jobs that you might call as an interesting job, but um, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the backside to get this uh, this job done. This is a, uh, a camshaft out of a racing engine, um, a mate of a mate's uh, rebuilding, and this drive pin that fits onto that sprocket has deformed. Um, the customer's tried to get that out himself, but uh, has had no success and uh, he's also smashed in or, or mushroomed out this edge here that we'll clean up with a, uh, with a stone. But um, looking at this, he told me, I did see the photos, that this, is a, this had already half moved out and you can see the mode as to why that's happened. You can see in the back of this gear here, they've actually machined out a clearance. So it's not actually acting as a shear. So, it's actually deforming inside where that clearance is. And that's where the issue's been caused. And you can see well they've done the clearance so that when they when they come through with their uh, with their reamed hole, that they're not half cutting out that boss, causing the the, um, the hole to run um, off true. So that's the reason why they've opened that up. But as I said, it's it's caused a mechanical issue and that uh, it doesn't put that pin in shear, and uh, that's where issues come up. Right, so what have we found out with this so far? So he's given me a series of drive pins that come with these. And these measure up at about 2 thou under 5 sixteenths. So 2 thou under um, 0.3125. So they measure up about 2.1. So they're under size for 5 16th and you can actually see and I'd say that these have been drawn down from 5 16th stock you can actually see the really bad score marks in this where it's been pulled through the die and then resized down and you'll often find with proprietary items that they have special tooling that they use to do their work which means often you've actually got to go back to them to get these jobs reworked so in this particular case, everything is a couple of thou off that 5 16th mark, which is going to make it very difficult to try and match. So on top of that, we've got to get this pin out. What the customer also wants is a second pin put through here and a second hole put through on the sprocket as well, which is no real drama to fit those pins. So as I said, we're in a bit of strife with sizing on these. So we've got a couple of options. One is I can draw and ream that out 5 sixteenths and make up new pins that will be a sized fit inside that hole. But on the exposed diameter, they'll be the same as these blokes here. And that's a fairly easy thing to do. It means that if these pins have ever got to be replaced in the future, we'll need to make up special pins. Um, these pins are just mild steel. I'm just looking at these. These these are supposed to be chrome molly, but they certainly don't look like chrome molly to me. They certainly just look like bright, same as that stuff there, very soft, and that's uh, partially possibly one of the reasons why that's sheared out the way that it has. Um, the other option is to try and drill and then run a small tool down to bore that out to size. And that's an option too. And we may look at that. I've got to make up a new sleeve to fit on my boring bar. Um, the setup for this is going to have to be in the mill with my horizontal attachment coming in at 90 degrees to it. So uh, we can do all of our operations in the one setup if that's the case. First issue we've got is trying to get this out first. So a couple of options to get it out. This is probably where we need Bruce with him. Um, as I said, the customer's thumped that on the end there with a hammer and he's mushroomed that out. I'm going to put this high tensile bolt inside. I'm going to use a, um, a brass drift. I'll lock that in the vise and I'll see if I can't move it. If I can't move it, what I'll do is I'll drill and tap down the guts of that and we'll make up a small bridge that I can use to jack that screw out after we've drilled and tapped that and we'll see if we can draw it out that way. I suspect with the way that this is half sheared, this has been upset inside and it's, uh, it's certainly got itself jammed up. So we might even try and tap that back a little bit. Once we've got this pin out, that gives me the option to machine up another pin in the lathe that I can fit in here, which is a close fit, a sliding fit, that I can then use to clock and get that exactly parallel across the center line. 
And once we've got that, I can also clock and find out what our distance is off the center so we can set up and then redraw for this bloke here. So as I said, it's a, it's a tricky job, which converts to being a pain in the backside job. Um, I think he wants to race this engine on the weekend. So uh, we've got a fair bit of work ahead of us to try and get this out and get the new holes put through. What I will do, once I know these centers, I'll set this one up separately and I'll counterbore into the back there as close as I can to the diameter that's gonna come through. And you can actually see this hole is slightly offset one way so that it doesn't impinge into the bore as well. The other issue is we've got this thrust bearing sitting in place as well. So I'm gonna to have to make up some sort of a cover, plastic cover, shim cover, something that will go over this to try and protect from any swarf that's gonna get inside there. So. We'll have to come up with something there as well. So, very tricky little job. Certainly got its challenges with it, but we'll see how we go. All right, first thing is I'm gonna try and get this pin out and uh, I'll come back to you and let you know how I go with that. Um, as I said, we're gonna screw that in there. I'm gonna use the head to actually hit off with a, uh, with a brass drift and we'll see if we can't get some movement out of that. All right, guys, back soon. I'll let you know what we found. All right, well, I tried setting it up in the vise and using a, um, a dolly to punch that out, but it just kept slipping through the vise. We put a fair bit of force on that and, and nothing moved. I drilled and tapped down into it, put a bridging piece across to try and pull it out, but it's just snapped off. So what I might do is drill that a little bit deeper where it's gonna have a bit of body with it. And I'll see if I can pull it out that way. But it's, uh, failing that I'm gonna have to try and drill that out and get that, without damaging this, get this thing uh, drilled out and we'll see how we go. Um, I'm reluctant to put heat on this. Um, this face here is, is hardened, so I don't want to upset that at all. I did put some heat on the actual pin to let it wick down, just the thought that maybe there's a bit of Loctite in there, but yeah, it's just a bit hard to know. Anyway, I'll drill that down and tap that out a little bit deeper and uh, We'll see with a bit more body inside there whether we can uh, whether we can draw that out. I'm not hopeful. I think we're gonna have to drill this all the way out, but we'll see how we go. Right, uh, so I've made up a new bridging space that's going to go across there. That'll be our bridge that goes across there, and our bolt that goes down inside. And as you can see, that's where the uh, the other one snapped off on us. So that was the other bridging piece that I was using. Let this stick up a little bit further, but. We'll set this one up in the vise, and uh, now that we've got the tap down inside the body there, we'll see if we can actually get that to draw out with a bit of uh, bit of load on that uh, on that bolt head. Righto, let's see how we go this time. Hello. Either the pin's twisting. We might just have a look and see what's going on. I'd hate for that pin to be twisting in there. Hmm. This is my woodwork bench here that hasn't been used as a woodwork bench for a very long time. But, uh, I reckon we might be moving there guys. I reckon we might have some movement. I'm going to put another couple of packing washers underneath that. There's a little bit more length to draw on. They're going to tick. So we're going to go right to the end. We'll go all the way with this. I don't want to try and punch it out on the vise and then close that up and find we can't get it out the rest of the way. So I'm just going to play this conservative. And take it out all the way like this. Provided the pin doesn't start spinning in the hole, which it probably will at some stage. Well, that's it fellas, 
it's out. We haven't breached the side at all. So we've kept all that intact. You can see that offset where it's tried to shear off where that counterbore, back counterbore has been done on that, uh, on that gear. So I'm going to try and set this one up and be a little bit differently when I drill that uh, or, or uh, sort that second hole out. So anyway, that's a big thing out of the way getting that pin out. I'll tell you what, that was just as tight as tight as tight could be. Anyway, we've got it out and uh, everything's perfectly intact on this. So I'm happy about that. All right. As I said, what I think we'll do is we'll machine up um, a pin that's going to be just a sliding fit in there so I can start getting some reference points set up. And I'll also get this stone so that we can get the timing gear over because, as I said, that's been mushroomed out a little bit. All right, we'll get those things done and then we'll come back with the next stage. Righto, so this has been mushroomed in a fair old way. It's uh, deformed quite a bit there. So... I'm using a very very small or smooth mill file and what I'm doing is I'm just putting the gear up offering it up and giving it a rub and you'll see the witness left behind there showing where it's still high so we just take a tiny little bit off and then we offer it up again what I'll do at the very end of this is I'll stone it Once again, we just take the witness off and she goes on a little bit further. All right, well, I'm going to continue on with that until I've got that a nice fit into place. Once again, we can see that witness around there. It's getting very, very close. It's getting very close. Righto, so we've been at this for about 15 minutes, just very gently taking it off, and that does go on now, but it's very tight. So what I do now, just with the oil stone, just work that with the oil stone, just to get that clearance back for us, just a tad more. And it looks like when that pin has sheared, it almost looks like that um, the uh, gear has also moved a little bit because it has marked up the shaft a little bit as well. Right, so what we've really done is just buff that shaft a bit. Okay, that's got a bit of firmness to it, but I'm happy with that fit. That's uh, just how we want it. It's got a little bit of firmness to it. Probably just a slight bit of ovality in it, because I can feel it coming around and biting in one spot. But... All right, I'm happy with the shaft. I'm happy with that pin that we've got removed. We've done no damage to the camshaft. Next job we need to start doing is setting up and getting our datum points to start getting the second hole done. Now I've got a way that I'm thinking about we're gonna drill and ream this. That means we have to make up a waste piece to go on here so that uh, we get a full cut all the way through. But I'll have a bit more of a think about that. All right, guys. We'll get over the mill. We'll uh, we'll get this set up and we'll get the um, the horizontal um, milling attachment into place. So there's the V box we're going to be using, and I always because they're only soft and they can get knocked around. I always just run over them with a an oil stone just to take off any dags or little high spots that might be there. It's going to certainly help us with our setups. 
And then I also do the same with the table. I just give that a very, very light rub over before we uh, get these into place. All right, guys, so this was the, uh, the plan for the setup was to uh, make up a, a small dummy pin that we could slide inside there, a nice neat fit inside there. <coughs> Pardon me. Using a height gauge with a little uh, test indicator was to go from height to height and rotate that around until we had that exactly parallel with the table. Uh, we could then clock all this up and then get the second hole position spot on. The plan was then to put the sprocket on with the dummy pin in place, line it up and then drill through ream this out to a 5 16th which is what this hole here is take this off then just use one of the little tiny boring tools and actually bore that out to the size which is as i said around about two to three thou under size from 5 16th right problem we have now is that the sprocket is hardened and looking at the finish on it i'd suggest it's probably nitride hardened which is a process used for hardening after final machining uh, it's a very stable process for hardening. Um, it does take some time, 24 to 48 hours, depending on how long you want to soak this for to get the, the hardness that you want. But it's certainly nitride hardened, so it's probably up around the 50 to 60 Rockwell C mark on this. So with the gear that I have in my workshop, I can't drill, ream, or really do too much with this at all. Plan was, as you can see, they've got this counter bore on the back here, and that's opened up so that when they do drill and ream through, that it's not going to wander as it catches half of the boss. I was going to make up a waste piece to fit over here, a waste bush that would split, uh, clamp it on, and then drill through so that I'm actually drilling through solid meat all the way through. That way the drill is not going to wander off. But because this is nitride hardened, um, that sort of made that a little bit more difficult. So what we're going to do is do a small design change. Now the photo mar the, the, the mode of, of failure on this was was in bending because it's not actually in shear because that uh, counter bore has opened up in the back and, and just being soft steel, which is what these were, uh, they didn't last at all. So I'm going to make up a new pin out of a uh, socket eater cap screw, which are about a grade 12.6, around about the 40 to 43 Rockwell C hardness. But I'm also going to make up a small collar or a bush that's going to fit inside there to actually put that pin back into a shear plane. So we can use the single pin. We're not going to have the same mode of failure as what we had with uh, with these soft pins. I'll just grab the other pin that we extracted out. This is the one that did snap off and uh, it was badly bent. It was sort of like a bit of an S bend in it where it actually um, that actually bent in that uh, in that boss before uh, before moving, and the issue with moving obviously is it's gonna gonna throw the timing out. So, as I said, I think if we go with a uh, socket head cap screw, machine uh, a new pin up out of that, and then just put a small spacer bush, a tight fitting spacer bush into that to put that pin into shear. I think we're going to alleviate a lot of these problems. Anyway, that's the new plan, and uh, we'll make a start on that. All right, so I've got a socket head cap screw here. It's an M12. We'll machine this down to our nominal size, which is a couple of thou shy of um, 5 16th to make that a, uh, a press fit into the uh, into the hole in the end of that camshaft. five off our finish size. I'll bring that down a little bit further and then I'm going to give that a, a linish to final size so we'll bring you back when we've got that uh, we've got that pin down the line. All 
Alright, oh, no, so that's now been faced off and chamfered. So I'll set that up just for the hacksaw, we'll cut that off and then we'll um, we'll face off and chamfer the uh, the other end. But that's not really nice. That's uh, bang on the size of the drive pins that were there previously. So that's measuring up at 7.925, which is exactly the same size as the pins that I was given. So they're measuring up exactly the same as well. Although they're a bit rough when you do drum around, they, they loosen off in some spots and then they tighten up in others. So, yeah. All right, we'll get that uh, we'll get that cut off, and we'll get that faced and chamfered off the length. Starting to have a look at this uh, little spacer collar that we're going to make up now. Okay, so we're just knocking up this bush at the moment. Just sort of looking at the counterbore that's in the back of that sprocket, it almost looks like it's off centre, so we may have to fiddle with the OD on this a little bit to get things to fit through. But um, I've uh, set that up with the ball gauges and uh, it comes up to about 9.5 mil, so we'll come down to that to start with. We'll get this board to suit the pin. And then if I need to, I'll make up a small arbor that I can do the OD on this to get things so that everything fits up just right. Well, it's about 0.15 oversize. I'll set up now and we'll start uh, drilling and boring to get that to suit the pin. So I'll go on with the letter N drill for this one and uh, that'll put us about 10th uh, hour shy, 10 12th hour shy of our final size and we'll bore out the suit. cool down a bit so we can get that sized out and we'll start our little boring operation. Okay I've given us a very light lick inside with our boring bar and let's check our size with our little ball gauges. Just touching there. So we're at 7.79. About 0.12 to go. All right, I'm just gonna have to move the camera out of the way, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, it's getting a bit tight in here at the moment. I'll bring you back when we're uh, when we're almost there. Right, guys, we've just taken that final little lick on that. We have a perfect transition fit in that. Sucking in under its own. Alright. I'll take that down to my nominal size at 9.5 millimetres. I'll cut that back and then we'll face it and then we'll try it in place. And if it's not quite right, I'll need to set it up on a little arbor just to lick the OD. So we'll make up a very short tapered arbor to fit that. Alright. 
So here we go. Oh no, it's like being on a normal size. I'm just going to try fitting the sprocket onto that now. I'll sort of see how that looks. Okay, so that's a tight sliding fit on there now. Alright, I'll try and fit the pin up it. Alright, just as I thought. So I'd say that hole is slightly off center, so I'm going to have to reduce the OD on that slightly. It's almost going, but it's, it's not quite. I'll reduce the OD slightly so we can just elongate that off a little bit. The more I can get into the shear plane, the better I'll be. Alright okay, guys, so we've got our little pin here. Take some of that light away. Got a little pin here that's uh, Set an airtight fit into that. We've got our sprocket with a little counterball that's off centre. And that's now just seating down there beautifully. Set it a bit better. That's just sitting in there quite nicely now. And that was that hole was slightly tapered too, so what I've done is I've just filed a very very light taper on that to match and uh, yeah, I think we've got that we've got that pretty right now guys right I'll get that uh, cut the length and we will um, get that faced off to size and we're done all right that's become a very very neat fit in there that little bush the only issue I have at the moment is that it's not sitting flush and I need that to be dead flush so the easiest way would be to file that off, but I don't want to get any rubbish or anything into that little bearing. So I'll just set it up in the collet again, and we'll just give that uh, another five thou off, and we should be pretty close. All right, guys. Well, here's the money maker. Final fit up. So we've got our new dowel pin made. This is going to be a tap, a pretty heavy tap in fit, I think. Put on a block of wood down the floor here so it's bouncing a little bit, it's not uh, giving a good impact. But I don't want to damage this unit. Down to about 20, 23 now. So I've got about 2 mil to go. Oh no, that's it. All right, we'll go and get this sprocket and we'll see how that's going to fit up on him. Right, let's see how sprocket's going to fit up. can't see that but I've got some witness marks from where it was bell mouthed over on this side so I've just got to do a little bit more hand fitting to get those little high spots off so that it becomes a, a little bit better fit onto that all right we'll go and do that now right oh, that's the third witness check that I've done and I'm just taking oh so little off each time Okay, now that's home. Just a little light tap at the very, very end to get that set. So I'm going to leave that little tight fit there. I'm not going to work on that shaft anymore. I'm very happy with that. That has come up a treat. All right. What I'm going to do now is put our little tapered bush that we've made up to set that shear area. And uh, we'll see how the whole lot goes together. 
a little bush has a taper towards the top. Right. See how we go. Sitting at home now. Up beautifully on that. It's just a little bit tighter than it was before, so it's obviously bitten up on our little our little bush. And look, I'm absolutely wrapped with that. I don't think we could have had a better result. Obviously, our initial plan was to put two pins in, but uh, sometimes you've got to change your plans on the fly. And uh, I went back to the customer to see if we were okay to do a, a small design change on this. And put a, uh, a higher tensile pin in here. As I said, that's a um, uh, unbreaker socket to cap screw we've put in there. And as I said, I've just put a little bush in the back there so that we take up any slop and we create a shear point rather than a bending moment, which is what was happening before. So we'll get this back to the customer, see if he's happy with that and doesn't want any more changes. And uh, we'll get back to some of my own stuff in the shop. All right, guys. We'll catch you soon. Which uh, she's a bit beefier. And to be honest, most of the stuff I do is small block. Yeah. I'll get a bit of video of this going in anyway, Anthony. <laughs>